Hi, Phyllis here from southernfrugal.com. Uh, we are fixin' to make some chicken pie. That's what my grandmother used to say. I'm a fixin' to make supper. And she would also say, uh, y'all come on in here and hope me. H-O-P-E. I don't know if I've told y'all that on a video before or not, but of course my grandmother's gone on to heaven now. But I remember um, as I was getting older, Sometimes when she would say that, I'd have to ask Mama, what does she mean? Mama would say, go help her, you know? So she would just, she was, her ancestry was from Scotland. And um, I don't know, I guess in Scotland, back in those days, instead of saying, will you help me? They would say, will you help me? I don't know. Anyway, get on with the chicken pie. That's what we're getting ready to make. And I see that my tripod is a little screws about to come out of it, so I'll have to fix that. All right. So I've already cooked my chicken, and I did a video just a little while ago on how to cook the chicken in the pressure cooker. So here's my chicken that I'm going to use now. I've already separated the chicken in uh, two other parts of this. I froze along with some broth. So I've already cooked my potatoes. That's about four or five medium potatoes. I'm going to just dump those in. Already cooked my carrots, and I'm going to just dump those in along with a little of the water that was in them. And then I'm going to dump in my chicken. This is really, really good chicken. It's more of that... Uh, Fieldale chicken. I just love it. My husband said, well, you haven't fixed a chicken pie in a long time. And I said, yeah, because I couldn't find any good chicken. That's why. But now that I've found the Fieldale chicken at Bilo, I'm fixing a lot more things with chicken. All right, so we're just going to mix that up in there. Now we're going to fix a sauce to go on this. And it's going to make it really, really rich and make it taste really, really good. So I'm kind of getting my carrots distributed and my potatoes. So, all right, now I'm not putting a bottom crust on this, only a top crust. Get everything more distributed evenly as I can. All right, so here's the base for the chicken pie. Let me get the salad away. the way. Like this. All right. Now, I've got this sitting on a pan that's actually, I think it's like a cookie sheet, that's a little bit bigger than my Pyrex pan. So I've gone ahead, put some um, plastic wrap over it because I want my crust to be just a little bit smaller than the outside edge of this pan. That's the way I can make sure I've got my crust right. Excuse me, right. Excuse me, right. All right, so we're gonna push this aside. And this is the same exact crust that I use for most of my pies. I hope you can see, let me cut the light on. All right, we're back. All right, so one and a third cups of all-purpose flour. And I've got half a cup of Crisco. Now, you know, now they say no hydrogenated anything and that actually animal fat is better for you than hydrogenated shortening. So if that be the case, you could actually use uh, lard for this. It would make a very good crust, by the way. All right, so I'm going to sprinkle in one half teaspoon of salt. I get started with that I want to put this is one egg yolk from a large egg I'm going to put three tablespoons of ice water in there now I might need one more spoonful of water so I'm just going to leave that sitting on the side and just mix this egg and the water up really good just beat it together with a little fork 
All right, that ought to do it. All right, now I'm going to use my hands, so I'm going to get this uh, shortening out. And I'm going to mix it in with my hands into the one and third cups of all-purpose flour. And if you've looked at my other videos, you know that on every pie that I make or whatever, I use this crust just because I really like it. And it comes out crispy every time. So you want to mix that up with your hands or if you prefer one of those pastry cutters. I've got one, but I never use it. In fact, it just takes up space in my drawer. All right, you want to get this to the place where it's about, the crumbs are maybe about the size of a pea. That will work. And that'll really be good enough right there. All right, now I'm going to just make a little hole and dump my egg and water mixture right down in the middle of it. Now, you never know if you're going to need more water until you start mixing it up. What you're looking for is you want it to come together. And by the way, this is unbleached flour I'm using today, but it is all purpose. So that's why it looks a little more yellow, really. All right, now, I can sort of tell I'm going to need another tablespoon of water. So I'm just going to sprinkle that in. Most of the time, I only need uh, three tablespoons, but every flour is different. So now I'm going to get it to come together. All right. Now I don't put a bottom crust on my chicken pie because it gets gummy. And it really is too much crust, even though I like a lot of crust, I want it real crispy and buttery. So, all right, so this should do it. Clean out that bowl. All right, now we're ready to start rolling this out. And I'm going to make this sort of in an oblong shape, because my pan is oblong. Now this is a pretty sturdy pan. It doesn't give hardly at all when you mash down on it. All right, let me get something to wipe my hands real quick. All right, now we're ready for the next. Get that out of the way. Piece of plastic right over the top. Way you don't ever waste any of the crust, any of the dough for the crust, let's put it that way, if you know the size of the pan. So now I want to roll it out to the edges, or almost to the edges. By the way, I used to love chicken pie, but then when they started giving the chickens all those hormones and all that stuff, I just got to where I didn't like chicken at all. I mean, I didn't, I wouldn't even order chicken at a restaurant. I just couldn't stand it, actually. But now that I found this chicken, I'm going to do a lot more chicken dishes because that uh, Fieldale chicken is absolutely delicious. It very much reminds me of the chicken that my grandmother used to have. Of course, they would raise their own chickens. And they were always so good. All right, so I'm going to get this as much as I can 
into the shape of the Pyrex dish I'm going to cook this in. I'm going to take some of that plastic out. Kind of push it in a little bit because I want to use every bit of the crust. Set this aside. And you really don't even have to put it in the refrigerator. All right, so now we've got our uh, chicken and our potatoes and our carrots, and we're ready to fix our sauce. So hold on while I move you over here. All right, let's see if that works. Yes, it does. All right, I've got four tablespoons of butter melted in this pan. To this, I'm going to add four tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And we're just going to let this just slightly brown. We don't want it browned a lot, just slightly. I'll just go ahead and put some salt in here right now. And while I'm at it, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to salt my chicken and my carrots and my potatoes. All right, that should be enough. Now, I really don't put any other seasoning in this because I want to be able to taste, taste that wonderful chicken. I don't really need anything to enhance the taste of it at all. I'm going to go ahead and put my burner up a little higher. I'm going to add about two cups of half and half as soon as this flour starts browning just a little bit. All right, there we are. Now on this back burner, let me just show you that. I've got my chicken bone skin, whatever that I picked from the chicken and I've got six cups of water in there and I'm making some chicken broth but it doesn't have anything to do with the chicken pie because I'm not going to use that. We'll be using that to probably make egg drop soup later on in the week. All right, so now my little flour and butter mixture is kind of bubbling. You don't want this to burn so you want to be stirring it constantly. I'm going to turn that down to medium. And once you've got your chicken ready for the chicken pie, you know, and you've already got your vegetables cooked, everything comes together pretty quick. So you're basically just making a white sauce, a really rich white sauce. I'm going to go ahead and use my whisk. So you just want to heat that flour up enough and just let it slightly, slightly come, get a little bit of brown on the bottom of the pan. All right, that looks like about it. This is going to be about two cups of half and half. There might be a little more in this, but that's about what you want to use. So, I've got my burner, I've turned it down to medium low, and I'm going to slowly start adding this half and half. to a boil and start thickening a little more. And this is one of the things that makes a chicken pie so good is this cream type sauce that's going to go in it. All right, ready to add a little more. Keep doing the whisk. Time it gets thicker. Make sure it's not being 
stuck to the bottom in any way. This way the lumps will come right out of it. If you do add that milk slowly, let it thicken up each time, and then just do it with the whisk. Yeah, my grandmother, getting back to that, my grandmother used some words, you know, like, like I remember her taking us out, me and my sister out in the woods to show us, um, she called it a toothbrush tree. So, of course, me and my sister were quite fascinated by that. And, uh, you know, we thought there were going to be toothbrushes growing on it, like you buy in the store. It was so funny. And uh, so she took us out and we went all into the woods looking around and then finally there was the tree and I don't even really know what kind of tree it was but she showed us how to break off a little piece of it and then the end of it you could uh, make it you know into these little uh, things like a toothbrush and uh, so then that's what she said they used as toothbrushes before somebody invented a plastic toothbrush I guess. Anyway, that was all very interesting. And I couldn't find that tree now. My life depended on it probably, and I have no idea what kind it was. But that's always the kind they used to make their toothbrushes because, of course, back then you couldn't buy toothbrushes. You, you had to come up with something. And that's what they all used to brush their teeth. And it did. It made a, you know, of course, we, I had one and my sister had one. We walked back to the house. I gotta show you this. We would put it in our teeth, you know, and be doing like that, just like she showed us to do. And it did, it cleaned your teeth. Probably had some enzymes in that uh, wood that probably helped too. And my grandmother was quite the character. She had uh, one of her chickens died. I don't know if I've told this on a video or not. I'll just tell it again. You know how it is with old people. We just keep telling the same stories over and over again. But uh, my grandmother, uh, one of her chickens died. Uh, you know, it was a, a hen, a big chicken that was, you know, laid eggs for her. And so uh, she came in there and she said, Phyllis, come on out here and help me. And I said, well, what are you gonna do, Grandma? And she said, we we're gonna go see what killed this chicken. And my mother said, now, Phyllis, I don't want you going out there. She's going to be cutting that chicken open and everything. And I said, well, Grandma wants me to go. And Grandma said, come on. Come on out here and help me. And so we went out to in the middle of the apple orchard, which was by this point all grown up with weeds. And uh, she had a straight-edge razor blade with her. And she, she cut that chicken open. And she said, okay, now, this is the heart. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay, now here's the liver. The liver looks okay too. She's just cutting it all up and pulling out those internal organs. And she had a shovel with it because we were gonna have to bury it, of course. But uh, she never could figure out why that chicken died. But anyway, it was so funny because the chicken, I guess, had died the night before, and uh, it was still it was stiff, you know. But anyway, she cut that chicken up and trying to figure out why he died. And she just couldn't see anything wrong with it. So anyway, my mother really didn't want me out there. She didn't want me to catch some disease, I guess. But anyway, I went to hope my grandmother. All right. I'm going to turn that up a little bit and get this almost to a boil. Now, you don't want this to come to a full boil. But you do want it, you know, thicker than this. And the way that's going to happen is when it gets really good and hot. I also don't want it to stick. This is not my best burner, by the way. So I'm going to turn it up again. And I'm going to have to move the camera back over there in a minute. Yeah, there we go. So it should be getting a little thicker here in just a minute. I'm just trying to think of any more stories. Oh, let me think of one from with my grandfather. This is on my mother's side. Uh, they, I never saw this side of my grandfather, but the, uh, my uncles used to say he had a really, really bad temper. 
and he had this mule, and I don't know, he was trying to get him strapped up to plow in the fields or something, and the mule kicked him. I gotta show you this. The mule kicked him right here on his face, and all his life he had a horseshoe scar right in there. But they said when that mule did that to my grandfather, there was a piece of board laying out there, and my grandfather picked up the board and just started beating that mule in the head with it. So, I mean, he didn't really hurt the mule. How, how bad could you hurt a mule, right? But the, uh, the scar stayed on his face all his life. If you, you couldn't really notice it unless you knew it was there. And then you could see it. But, you know, most people wouldn't have noticed it. All right, this is just before boiling. And you see it's pretty thick now. So now we're ready to complete our chicken pie. So I'm going to move y'all back over. Just hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, here we are. I've started doing the camera like this rather than cutting it off every time. All right, we're ready to add the sauce. So we're just going to dump this all in. Now we are going to bake this in the oven at about 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. Now everything inside the pie is already done. So what we will be doing is cooking mainly the crust. So I'm gonna spread that out and get that good sauce all covering up all the chicken and the vegetables. do it. I think I forgot to cut my oven on. All right, it's on now. Okay, so here's the pie and the filling on the inside of it. And remember there was still a little liquid in there from where I cooked the carrots. So that will help this to be just the right consistency. Now here's the hard part. Everything's easy up to this point. But I want to get this crust on there and I want to get it on in you know, the right way the very first time. Because if you don't, there is no going back. So what I'm going to do is just lift up the whole pan, try to get it centered. But all right, I didn't get it exactly right, so I'm going to see if I can move it over. There we go. Sometimes you move it a little bit. Take the plastic off. Now I'm just going to push those edges down just a little bit. And by the way, that's the best part. Now it gets all crunchy. You don't want to push it down too much. Now we're going to have to let some steam out of it. So I like to just put the knife down in there, make holes all up and down it. Be able to let that steam out. And if some of the pie bubbles up and gets on the crust, that's perfectly okay because some of it probably will, but that just makes it all the better. All right, this is ready to go in the oven. Now, I didn't have my oven on, so I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes before I put this in. But you wanna bake it at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. Should get your crust done. Now, I don't know how your oven would be, but whatever it takes to get this crust kind of browned and crispy. All right, when this is done, we'll be back. Alrighty, here is the chicken pie all done. It took exactly 30 minutes. I don't know if it shows up on here, but it's very nicely brown. See right there? Came over a little bit, but that's okay. That will still be great. In fact, I actually like it when it kind of comes over like that. Let's look at it down here. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Alright, I'm going to dish out some of this and let you see what it looks like. I gotta go get a saucer, and I told my husband I was recording, 
and I hear his computer really loud. You know, I always say, recording, and he always says, okay, but this time he forgot. All right, let me dish this up and we'll look at it then. All right, there it is all dished up. Now, if y'all want your sauce a little runnier than that, you could just add more water when you're making the sauce. I really like mine like this. There it is. Lots and lots of chicken, carrots, and potatoes. Mm -mm -mm. I can't wait to eat some of this. All right, see y'all next time.